this is Robert and welcome to Also On The News. On this channel I generally talk about news topics that are quirky, amusing or interesting, something that might not be front page news. If you want to send me something feel free to email me a news story or leave a comment for ideas. I'll leave my email address in the description or somewhere in the comments. If I use your suggestion, I will give you a shout out in the video. So today's news story comes from the UK with The Guardian. Woman cleared of spiking colleagues coffee with Viagra. Yes, that is right. So a woman here in the UK was accused of spiking her colleague's coffee with Viagra. So this story uh, reported 25th of January 2024 by The Guardian, uh, but it goes back, the story goes back to September 2018. So a woman has been cleared of poisoning colleagues with instant coffee spiked with ground up Viagra tablets. Well, so, hmm, Karen Beale, 62, described as someone who wanted to help people, not harm, was found not guilty by a jury of seven men and five women at the Canterbury Crown Court. Beale, a former factory cleaner, claimed she had been set up when she was filmed checking a jar of instant coffee that the police later had found been laced with Sildenafil, an erectile dysfunction treatment sold under the brand name Viagra, a medication for high cholesterol. Beale told the jury she had checked one Nescafe blend 37 coffee jar under instruction from the general manager of Envirograph, a factory that makes fire production, fire production products in Dover where she worked. So, yeah, she's saying that she thinks she was set up. Uh, there's video footage, and the video footage, apparently, or allegedly, I don't know what you want to call it, showed her tampering with the Nescafe jar. So, but she absolutely denied it, and she went to court, found not guilty. So, she denied two offences attempting to Minister a poison or other destructive or noxious thing with intent to injure, aggrieve, or annoy between November 2017 and September 2018. Beale thanked the jury as she was released from the dock. So, in the UK, how it works when you go to court, like in a criminal, it's not like, say, in the US where you sit in front of the judge, you will be sitting in a little box if you will. It's called the dock and it's like a cubicle. Yeah, I think like in ice hockey where, you know, the sin bin, something like that. And you just gotta wait in there and that's where you'll be. So you won't be sitting with your lawyer. You won't be sitting with your, you won't be sitting in front of the court. You'll be sitting to the one side and that's where you will be. Personally, I don't agree with that system. I think you should be sitting next to your legal representative in court, but that's a different story for a different day. Let me know what you think of this system. Do you think you prefer uh, having a dock where you, as the defendant, is off to one side? Or do you think it's better for you to sit with your lawyer in front of the judge? So let's carry on with the story. So she had denied two offences attempting to administer a poison or other destructive or noxious thing with intent to injure, aggrieve or annoy between November 2017 and September 2018. Beale thanked the jury as she was released from the dock. At the end of the trial, the judge Simon Taylor Casey ordered the forfeiture and destruction of the coffee. So if you want to know what KC means when the judge has that and end of a name, it stands for King's Council. Previously it was QC with Queen Elizabeth. So think of, you probably know in the UK, you have knighthoods. So you become sir or dame, which is dame is the equivalent, is the female version of a knighthood. And sir is the male equivalent of a knighthood. And you've got little, and there's different types of knighthoods in, in the UK. But anyway, so KC, 
King's Council means uh, it's basically just a reward for being good at the legal, being good at the legal side of things, and it also allows you to double, quadruple, treble, whatever it is, your hourly rate, just because you've got KC or QC on your initials. So. And uh, yeah, the judge ordered the forfeiture of the coffee. Well, yeah, ordered this forfeiture and destruction of the coffee. Well, I better be safe and sorry, alright? Um, so let's carry on. Beale was arrested in September 2008, 2018, but it took more than five years for the case against her to be heard. After the verdicts had been returned, Taylor told jurors. The delay had been due in part to the COVID pandemic. At the pre-trial hearing in December last year, the judge had remarked the court owed Miss Beale an apology for such a lengthy wait. Well, yeah, five years or so to wait for this one thing to happen. The trial heard she secretly was she was secretly filmed. Allegedly fiddling with the jar of instant granules in September 2018, the covert camera had been placed in the spine of a lever arch after the firm's accountant, Katrina Gravener, began to strange taste blue and white specks and a slurry in her drink. Now, not what you expect to be in this cafe, said prosecutor Matthew Hodgetts at the start of Bill's trial. Well, yeah, understatement. In the 13 minute footage, Bill could be seen wearing blue latex gloves as she picked up the jar and occasionally shook it. Though none of the chemicals were toxic, the prosecution alleged that she hoped and attended it had some effect. I, I think that's quite strange, actually. Why would you? It's, it's just one thing that's not elaborated on. Is why were you wearing latex gloves, and why were you shaking the coffee? Strange, but anyway, Beale, who had lived in Dover but later moved to Shropshire, had previously worked as a therapist in Faversham, then her home. In a character reference provided to the court. A former client described her as someone with integrity and compassion who would help, not harm. Giving evidence at her trial, Beale denied tampering with the coffee or having any reason to do so. She said she'd been told by the general manager, Paul Ackerman Mond, about the governor's, about Gravener's concerns and was asked to keep an eye on the coffee. In his closing speech, to the jury, her barrister argued that the camera footage had not come from impartial, disconnected source. So I'm not quite sure what he means by that, but let's carry on. There is no footage of how the substance came to be in there. How have the contaminants got, contaminants got into the coffee? Why is it we have all the footage, but we don't actually see anything going into the coffee? Ben Owen asked the jury. What we see is Karen Beale looking at the coffee carefully, perfectly consistent with her case. So maybe uh, when the, her barrister said it had not come from an impartial, disconnected source, maybe he was saying that there is, you know, we've got all this evidence of looking her, look at her looking at the coffee, and. You know, shaking it all about, and as you do, but we've got no evidence of her putting anything into the coffee. Maybe that's what he means. And if a if you know what a barrister is, it's not like a banister. Like I was a kid, I thought barrister was like some kind of a banister, and I always thought that was a weird name. But anyway, so a barrister is a different type of lawyer. So in England and in Wales you have a barrister and solicitor and they do overlap but they are different so solicitor is mainly uh, office based shall we say and a barrister is mainly court based so you know i won't guess you can watch other videos about the very uh, about the differences if you watch black belt barristers videos 
I'm sure he will give you a better understanding of what a solicitor and what a uh, what a barrister does. So anyway, I think that's a weird story. What do you think? Do you think she was putting things into the uh, putting things in, into the coffee? Was it even Viagra? I don't know. I don't think that's quite clear what was actually being put into there. Something was put into there, but if it was Viagra, who knows? But, uh, yeah, let me know what you think, guys.